The Royal Connection. Welcome to World War II by Mike W. The History of the 95 Years' War. This special episode is about the royal families throughout Europe and how they are connected and or related as well as in information on the Japanese royal family. Just because they are family does not keep them from going to war with each other. Oh, uh, where to start? Let's start with the German Empire. In my first video, I talked about King Wilhelm I of Prussia, who then became Emperor of the German Empire at the end of the Franco-Prussian War. He was the son of Prince Frederick William and Louise Mecklenburg Schultz. Both were German. Wilhelm I was married to Princess Augusta of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, or Augusta Marie Louise Katharina. She was a daughter of Charles Frederick, Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, a German, and Maria Pavlovna of Russia. So you have a German-Russian connection. When Wilhelm I died on March 9, 1888, his son, German Crown Prince Frederick III, or Frederick Wilhelm Nicholas Karl von Hohenzollern, ascended to the throne of Germany. He was married to Victoria, Princess Royale, who was the daughter of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, a German United Kingdom connection. He was emperor for a mere 99 days when he died of cancer. He was succeeded by King Wilhelm II, his eldest son. He was married to Augusta Victoria of Schleswig-Holstein, or Augusta Victoria Federica Louise Fiodora Jenny. If you recall from my first video, the Schleswig-Holstein region was cause for war between Denmark and Austria. 1888 is known as the year of the three emperors in the German Empire. King Wilhelm II had a few personal flaws that made him difficult to deal with, such as a feeling he had to exercise excessive bravado due to a deformed left arm that was a result of a breech birth. And during his reign, he acted in very erratic ways. Being the grandson of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, he was cousin to King George V of the United Kingdom and also a cousin to the Emperor or Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. We'll get into all of that in a little bit. Now, in the United Kingdom, Queen Victoria ruled from the June 20th of 1837 until January 22nd of 1901. She was queen so long that an era has been named after her, the Victorian era. She was married to Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg. She was married to Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and 1837 until January 22nd of 1901. She was queen so long that an era has been named after her, the Victorian era. She was married to Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, Francis Albert Augustus Charles Emmanuel. Their daughter, Victoria, Princess Royale, as I mentioned earlier, was married to King Frederick III of Germany. Queen Victoria was then seceded 
by her son, King Edward VII, in 1901. He was married to Alexandra of Denmark, or Alexandra Caroline Marie Charlotte Louise Julia, who was the daughter of Christian IX of Denmark, a Danish United Kingdom connection. And if you remember from my first video, it was Christian IX's decision to invade the duchies of Schleswig, Holstein, and Lauenburg that began a short war between Denmark and the combined forces of Austria and Prussia. King Edward VII rules until May of 1910. His successor is King George V, who was married to Mary of Teck or Victoria, Mary, Augusta, Louise, Olga, Pauline, Claudine, Agnes, who was the daughter of Count Francis von Hohenstein of Austria. So now you have an Austrian United Kingdom connection. King George V ruled during the World War I part of the 95 Years War and until 1936. His successor was King Edward VIII. He was king for less than a year because he proposed to a divorcee from America. The horror! Oh wait, doesn't that... well anyways. He was quickly replaced by King George VI who rules until after the end of the 95 Years' War. He was married to Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, who will become known as the Queen Mother. The British royal family continues in the United Kingdom to this day. Now, in Denmark. It is here in Denmark where a lot of the connections to the others are made. As you recall, it is Christian IX of Denmark began his reign on November 15, 1863, and he rules until January 29th of 1906. He was married to Louise of Hesse Kessel, who was Dane through and through. Their daughter, Maria Theodornova, was married to King Alexander III of Russia. I'll get into that in a little detail in a bit. So we have a Russian-Danish connection. Christian IX is succeeded by Frederick VIII in 1906, and he rules until May 14th of 1912. He is married to Louise of Sweden, or Louise Josephine Eugenie. He is succeeded by Christian X in May of 1912, and he rules until April of 1947, after the end of the 95 Years' War. He was married to Alexandrine of Mecklenburg-Schwein, Queen of Denmark, also Queen of Iceland. The royal family in Denmark is still going strong today. In, in Russia. Let's go back to Alexander II. He was Emperor of Russia from April 29th of 1818 until March 13th of 1881. He also had the titles of King of Poland and Grand Duke of Finland. Russia and Finland don't get along in the future as you will see. Quick note, he was the Russian emperor that sold Alaska to the United States back in 1867. Possession of Alaska by the U.S. plays a role in the 95 years war far into the future. He also joined the League of Three Emperors along with Kaiser Wilhelm I of the German Empire and Franz Joseph I of the 
Austro-Hungarian Empire, who I'll cover a little bit. He was married to Marie Alexandrinova, who was born Princess Marie of Hesse and by Rhine. She was the daughter of Ludwig II, Grand Duke of Hesse, and Princess Wilhelmine of Baden. There's a Russian-German connection there. When he was assassinated in 1881, he was succeeded by his son, Alexander III. Alexander III was married to Maria Feodorbona. As I mentioned before, she was known before her marriage as Princess Dagmar of Denmark, who was the daughter of Christian IX. Her sister, Queen Alexandra, is the wife of King Edward VII of England, and her brother is King Frederick VIII of Denmark. Edward VII of England, and her brother is King Frederick VIII of Denmark. Her brother is King Frederick VIII of Denmark. Alexander III reigned as Tsar from March 13th of 1881 to November 1st of 1894. His successor was his son, Nicholas II. Tsar Nicholas was married to Alexandra Theodornova, or Princess Alex of Hesse and by Rhine. Alex was the daughter of Louis IX, Grand Duke of Hesse and by Rhine, and Princess Alice of the United Kingdom, who was the daughter of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. So Alex was Queen Victoria's granddaughter married to the Tsar of Russia. As mentioned previously, Nicholas was King George V of England's first cousin and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany's third cousin. Tsar Nicholas ruled from November 1st of 1894 to March 15th of 1917. His rule came to an end in February of 1917. He then abdicated his throne and 300 years of Romanov rule came to an end. He and his family were then taken prisoner by the revolutionaries and moved to Tobolsk, Russia. There, on July 16th, the whole family was shot by Russian Bolsheviks to make sure that they were not rescued. In Austria-Hungary, Emperor Franz Joseph I ruled Austria-Hungary from 1848 to 1916. This was a dual monarchy. He was Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary. He was married to Duchess Elizabeth of Bavaria. He was emperor during the wars with Denmark, Prussia, the Franco-Prussian War, and the first half of the World War I portion of the 95 Years War. It was the assassination of his nephew, Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, which is located in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that was the catalyst for the beginning of the World One phase of the 95 Years' War. 68 years as emperor. There is an era named after him, though. He died on November 21st of 1916. He was succeeded by Charles I of Austria and Charles IV of Hungary. This is the same person, by the way. Charles I reigned from 1916 until 1918, when he renounced participation in state affairs, but did not abdicate. He was married to Zita of Bourbon Parma. He was the last monarch of Austria-Hungary, which began with the Holy Roman Empire in the 13th century and the Habsburg rule. As I mentioned, the Holy Roman Empire in my first video. In Spain, 
If you remember from my first video, I mentioned the Spanish succession question after Queen Isabella II was deposed in 1868. It was the final catalyst that was the start of the Franco-Prussian War. If you remember, the Prussians had supported Prince Leopold of Hohenzollern, but Napoleon III of France wouldn't have it. By the way, when Napoleon III is defeated and captured by the Prussians in 1870, was the end of the monarchical rule in France. So there are no royal connections here in France. Queen Isabella is forced to flee to France when her armies are defeated by revolutionaries. This, this Spanish Civil War is known as the Glorious Revolution. The victorious revolutionaries put this guy, Emilio I, as king. He was the son of the King of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. He ruled over the First Spanish Republic until 1874. When the Republic failed in 1874, the monarchy was restored, and Isabella II's son, Alfonso XII was crowned king. He was first married to Mercedes of Orleans, but she died about six months later. His second wife was Maria Christina of Austria. She may sound a little familiar if you watched my third video on the Spanish-American War. Her father was Archduke Carl Ferdinand of Austria. So we have a Spanish-Austrian connection. When Alfonso XII died, his unborn son, Alfonso XIII, would be king when he was old enough. But his mother, Maria Christina of Austria, rules as queen in his stead until 1902, when Alfonso XIII was old enough to take over the monarchy. He was married to Victoria Eugenie of Wittenberg. She was from the United Kingdom, a Spanish United Kingdom connection. He ruled Spain until his exile on April 14th of 1931. This revolution that led to his exile was a vote by the people of Spain. This was a referendum by the people to end the monarchy in Spain. The Second French Republic was established. King Alfonso did not actually abdicate his throne, which was defunct due to the referendum. He then abdicated his throne to his son, Juan I, in 1941. He died shortly after that in Rome, Italy. Now, let's go to the Pacific region and talk about Imperial Japan. Coincidentally, it was in 1868 that the Japanese Maijai Restoration occurs in Japan. And thank you for your patience if I mispronounce the Japanese words. This happens just before the beginning of the Franco-Prussian War in Europe. This basically was the establishment of the Japanese Empire, the unification of the Empire of Japan under one governmental system and one emperor. There are three emperors during this period between 1868 and 1947. This is when the modern constitution in Japan is adopted. Quick side note, the emperor's name is officially the time period or era which he reigns, his actual surname, which I will say is not his official name. There uh, was, uh, the first emperor was Emperor Maijai, or Emperor Muchushito. He ruled as emperor from February 3rd of 1867 to July 30th of 1912. During his reign, Japan went from a feudal state to an industrial power. 
massive changes took place in Japan, both socially and economically. He ruled Japan during the Japanese Industrial Revolution. Emperor Maidai was succeeded by his son, Emperor Taisho, or Emperor Hoshohito. He was emperor from July 30th of 1912 to December 25th of 1926. He had some mental and social maladies that kept him from the public view for most of his reign. Uh, and since he was barely involved with governmental issues, the two-party democratic system in Japan was able to fully develop during his reign. And that's in use today. He was emperor during World War I phase of the 95 Years' War, but seemed to have little involvement, other than being present when ships were launched and such. He was succeeded by his son, who served as regent, because he was still alive, from November 25th of 1919 until his death on the 25th of December of 1926. His son, Emperor Shawa, or Hirohito, officially became emperor on the 25th of December in 1926, and he ruled until January 7th of 1989. He rules during the time of Japanese expansionism, militarism of the 1920s and the 1930s, as well as the World War II phase of the 95 Years War, and obviously very long after that. The Japanese royal traditions continue to this day, but I must admit, there are no family connections between the European monarchies and Japan. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope it wasn't too confusing, but as you can see, there's a lot of connections with the royal families in Europe. Be sure to click on that subscribe button, hit that like button down there, the thumbs up, and the no notification bell to make sure you get notified when my next video comes out. And most importantly, share this with a friend, because I'm certain they'll be just as happy to watch it as you have been. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week on World War II with Mike W., The History of the 95 Years' War.